Hey guys, and welcome back to Duncan Rapper. So we're still in the trial for the nonstop debate. Uh, don't skip the tutorial <laughs> when they say it. I had to absorb one of the bullets, and now I can shoot the uh, the actual uh, defense that Byakuya has. So let's go. So I had to before we found the body. So that was the actual bullet that I had to absorb, and now I will be able to shoot what we need to. So if you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely should take it. Uh, it's a natural uh, reaction for any guy, and this is it. Break! Alright, so we did it. So that, uh, you have to hold triangle to absorb it. It was kind of annoying, but yeah. So I'll tell you what's so strange about it. Uh, because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that she went to the girls' blocker room first because Jihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see, that's a good answer, I must admit. Very interesting, indeed, but your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead, show us. What's with Byakuya's attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him cornered, but he's acting like he has nothing to do with him. What's the matter? You're not finished already? Are you sure? There must be more to it. There is, I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between the cases when Genocide Jack... How do I turn off auto? Triangle? Oh, right okay. Genocide Jack incidents. The proof that you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh, proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? The differences between the case and the other Genocide Jack murders. The evidence that proves Byakuya is responsible is hidden in there. What could it be? So we gotta choose my uh, bullet, which is... Make your argument! The library desk lamp, indeed. The difference between the cases... You want me to explain it again? Uh, when I want to use, I use my very own special uh, scissors, and when I use the same scissors to arrange the body. Which here was suspended with... So it was some kind of rope, was it not? That's right, it was absolutely was. Must have been something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get that Reddit from? It's, I've never seen that rope. Boom! Wrong! It was the library desk lamp. It was the extension cord. Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord. What? An extension cord? How did you not know it's an extension cord? How, did you not look at it? Yaku, yeah, you've used that extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And that same extension cord that was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses an extension cord as much as you wouldn't discover that fact. Then Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you want to think? Then your conclusion is something like this. I killed Chihiro in the girl's locker room, then hung her up and wrote the bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned. As if he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yeah, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Byaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Sorry, but can we hold on just a second? I think we need to talk about this a little bit more. Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still. There's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised it as my crime. He's telling us right in our face. It was the scene of the crime. 
Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal sociopath. What is there that bothers you? Wait. What was that just now? Something's not right. Shihiro's body was definitely found in the locker, the girl's locker room. But does that mean... Can we really just accept what Byakuya said as truth? No, I don't think so. There's something off about what he said. The scene of the crime. He said that you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There's absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else and then carried there later. Along with the other... Uh, along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was an awfully specific. Please tell me what you have reason in for saying all of that. I believe I do. Hey, Byakuya, did you just... Did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved from the crime scene, Byakuya, who had been so confident up till now, maybe Byakuya could have never realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey, don't just move on without permission. What do you mean that she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance that the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Evidence that shows the murder took place elsewhere. There was something that switched between the boys and girls locker rooms. And those are the two uh, locker room posters. Present. Got it. The proof that she was killed somewhere else is the poster that's hanging in each locker room. The proof is some posters? The poster in the locker room was a picture of a big boob supermodel, but doesn't. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would a girl's locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake. Alright, enough. Meanwhile, the girls' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Actually, that doesn't really seem to belong to the boys' locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched. And there's one thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? The stain. Protein coffee? Protein coffee? While I was in the locker room earlier, I spilled some of my protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. No, it's not the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. So that is the... Uh, where is it? This is the boys' locker room stain. Where is it? Disappearing stain, boys, locker room stain, right here. Present! The stain on the girls' locker room wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it in the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from the protein coffee. Then, does that mean the carpet was switched to? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other, it's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved alongside with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even, even bigger question, if the murder did take pl place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? Ah! To get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook 
should have only allowed her to access the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up, I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is he right? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Alright. Let's select my... My bullet argument. The broken E handbook. Is it really plausible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room? Ah, I've got it. She must have hacked her E handbook. I mean, she is a programmer. She was the ultimate programmer after all, that is very true. I'm sure that she would have been able to do this no problem for her. No doubt, I- or, no, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon's handbook. Boom, 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 boom! Doing it. We're doing it! No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh, well then yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I'm struck silent by how quickly you gave up. Plus, there isn't any regulation against using someone else's handbook. Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It has nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook if all you want and you'd be safe. Yup, 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 yup. Hit the nail square on the noggin. Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyways. So then, she must have hacked hers like I said. She was the ultimate programmer skills and... You can't fix an e-handbook. The instant you open one up, the security buzzer starts blaring. So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook, maybe Mr. Naegi's initial assumption is just wrong? It seems that there's no way that she could have gotten into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay, then I vote for Byakuya. Is that it, then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room, and Byakuya is the one who did it? Really? But still, I don't know what else I can do. Hold on a second. I agree with you, though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth, and that's what you've got to say? There's no way that she could have gotten into the boys' locker room, right? So, why are you so sure that she couldn't get in? There's still one other way that she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial, and I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait. What do you think you're doing? Don't worry, I'll make this whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. I'm excited, I'm excited. Huh? Al, it'll make things more exciting. Oh, well, all right. I declare an official class trial recess. All right, so we have a break. Wait, for real? Well, then, what is this you want to show us? It better not be very boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So shall we go? Here we go. So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold, and we headed off with Kokyo, Kyoko in the lead. And where she took us was... The scene of the crime. The girls' locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom. What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like to examine the victim's body one more time. You want to check it again? Be sure to examine the whole body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully? Like, using our hands? No, wait, no, 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 no. 
It's probably best if we run my hands all over. It's probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything. It's just based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let, a l just let one of the boys do it. Yeah. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. Just leave this to me. What is this? Some kind of secret girl-on-girl -girl action? Is this what you two are all about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse this intrusion. Putting your hands together with a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body. I believe we will solve this particularly this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What is this? What does this mean? What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Sakura's eyes were staring wildly into Hiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This girl is... Is what? Is a boy! I see, so she was actually he. Interesting. Thank you for informing this fact, or confirming this fact. What? You're joking, right? The big reveal. I wouldn't joke about this. Which is why she got access in the boy's locker room. Then... Then it's really true? Chihiro was a guy? Oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat! Which is why she was so adamant on not hanging out with the girls. She was so comfortable with the guys and all that other stuff. Chihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy. And he was cross... a cross-dresser? Now I'm really on fire. I wish I'd killed him. So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting! Yes, that certainly does make things more exciting. Now then, let's ride... let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. And it continues! All right, guys. So now we're going to resume the class trial, but I am going to end the episode here. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It does help us out a lot, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Where